Welcome back to Nixology. That's what we're apparently going to start calling this playlist and or channel. So uh, if you followed along in the last video, you should now have Home Manager installed. Um, you can run home manager dash help or whatever and get something back. Um, you'll have a file at home slash dot config slash nix packages slash home dot nix that'll look a lot like this. You could also edit it using home manager edit which is a little simpler than remembering that path. And that opens it in whatever editor you have configured. So, okay, fine, we enable home manager, and then in the last video I enabled that, but that doesn't do much. So we're gonna start configuring home manager. Now, um, there's a couple ways you can go about this. The first way is just looking for example configs and kind of copying whatever looks relevant there. The second way is reading the home manager source, which is fairly readable. But um, first, in this video, we're going to go the route of looking at examples. And then later, we're going to talk about um, how the home manager source is structured and some of the things that you have to know to read that and understand how you can configure it based on that. So first off, basically, what we do is just Google home manager examples. Um, and then you'll see the second, the second uh, link here is a wiki. It's got a list of examples. So you can click those and look through. Um, SRIDs has a whole bunch. Um, this puts you in this directory, nix config slash nix slash home, but if you go back one, you'll see the top level home.nix, which is where he kind of requires in all of these files. So you'd find a lot of examples of, of how home manager is used here or at any, other, any of those other links in the wiki, or you could search GitHub for home.nix would probably turn up a lot. But we're gonna go through mine. Uh, I have this repo, nope, that's not it, here, and within it I have a file somewhere called home.nix. So this is my previous home manager config before I kind of blew it away and installed home manager again to demo how this works. But um, in here I've got a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to ignore. We're going to try to get Vim working again with syntax highlighting for Nix because that would be useful. So within here I've got a whole bunch of stuff. Basically what we're looking for is programs.neovim. So looking at this, pretty much any time you have one of these, this is called a module. Uh, programs.neovim is a module in Home Manager. It's uh, the same kind of uh, pattern is reused. This Nix, OS, this Nix module pattern is used in Home Manager. It's used in Nix Darwin, it's used in Nix OS, and it's used in a project that, that uh, my team is working on to configure projects called Runix. So this module pattern tends to have uh, uh, enable, and that's a Boolean. So you say programs.neovim is enable true, and then some configuration for it. So here we've got, um, I'm just injecting some Vim configuration manually, but the important part is this list of plugins. So within Nix packages exists a whole bunch of Vim plugins packaged as uh, Nix packages dot Vim plugins dot, for example, Vim Nix. Scrolling past that list of plugins, that is essentially the end of it. Yeah, this is other stuff. So all we're really doing is specifying a list of plugins and then a config, and then vim alias. What vim alias means is we're installing NeoVim, which the default binary is called nvim. Vim alias is just do we want to be able to run vim in the terminal and also run NeoVim. So fine. Let's go here and we'll type programs.neovim equals open curly, end curly, semicolon, and then we're going to do enable equals true vim alias equals true, and then plugins equals a list, uh, that'll need a semicolon as well, and this can be packages.vim plugins dot vim nix, and that looks correct. So let's see if that works. Save the file, Go back out and run home manager switch. So that should rebuild the config. It should install Vim with this plugin. And if you look at what it's claiming it's going to do here, you can see um, it's building a VimRC. It's building NeoVim. Uh, I'm a little surprised I don't see something called Vim Nix here, but I don't know how it's doing it. 
So let's see now. I'll close this one. And if I do Home Manager Edit, great. I have, uh, I have Vim syntax highlighting. So that, uh, that worked. But what if we want some of this other stuff? OK, so uh, Groovebox is the color scheme I use. Let's say I want Groovebox. Let's see if this works automatically. We'll do Home Manager Switch. And then Home Manager Edit. Uh, it wasn't activated right away. So that's because in order to activate a color scheme in Vim, you need to actually do some extra configuration. Just having the plugin doesn't automatically activate it. So that must be happening in this extra config.vim file I have. So let's go out and find that. That was at dot home slash extra config.vim. And we should see something that uses the word groove box. It's not that one. There. Color scheme groove box. So that's all we have to run. But if we go back to that uh, home.nix file, we'll see the way that happened is we called extra config equals builtins.read file of some path. So what's happening is you're assigning extra config to be a string, which is the contents of that file. So in this case, because we only want to run one line, we won't bother to save it in a separate file. We're going to run extra config, and we're just going to make it a string. Color scheme group box. Now let's see if that works. Home manager switch. Hmm, it didn't like that. That's because I spelled it wrong. And home manager edit. And we now have my color scheme. So you could continue to follow through you know, this whole process of figuring out how you want Vim, config, data, Vim configured, adding plugins. One thing is the Nix language, um, you can see this, this list of plugins would get very redundant after a while, right? Having packages.vim plugins dot so and so and so. A uh, trick you can do is you can go with packages.vim plugins semicolon and then, whoops, that's all you need to do. Um, if you want to understand more about why that works, you could go to nixcloud.io slash tour. It's a great overview of the Nix language, walks you through um, pretty much everything you can do with the language itself. I highly recommend that. But yeah, that's how you can kind of plug away with um, getting started with Home Manager. One very interesting thing is now if I do which nvim, um, Hang on a second. Yeah, okay. So if I do which nvim, you'll see it's in my next profile. And if I do read link of that, you'll see it's this guy. And if I would go to anyone else's computer within the Shopify organization, I could do nix run this path dash c vim, and it would spawn that instance of vim after downloading it from our shared binary cache. Because um, when you're on a Shopify computer, anything you build with Nix at all is uploaded to our shared binary cache. So one thing I would caution you is it's a good practice in general not to put anything secret in a Nix uh, derivation. Um, but it's obviously extra important when we have this shared binary cache. So be very cautious not to put secrets in your home manager configuration. One pattern that um, can be useful is to put them in a file off to the side and basically just don't use secrets um, and talk to me if you if you desperately want to um, but yeah that's that's kind of the the introduction to home manager um, tomorrow we'll talk about looking through the home manager source and trying to make sense of of what it's doing and defining so see you then